Amen. Okay, have a seat. Get comfy. Oh, guys, it's so nice when we're all down here because we're all together, you know? It's a little cozier, maybe on a cold winter's day, but good morning. Happy New Year if I missed you at the start. Happy New Year. Here we are. We made it. 2023. People who were born in the year 2000 are turning 23 this year. I feel old. I hope you all had moments of treasure this Christmas. I know I, for one, will forever treasure the image of Pastor Brian getting pelted with snowballs on Christmas Day over the live stream. We have some images. Thanks to Shagan Komalafi for immortalizing this moment for us. I think Jackson is a highlight for me in these images too because it's just the sheer joy of the opportunity. So thank you to our tech team for letting me in on that moment when I was in Belfast. I hope you all had a good Christmas, whatever it looked like for you. I wonder how you are feeling stepping into another new year. For some of us, it may feel like a moment of change, either anticipating change or experiencing change. I know I feel that this year. I don't quite know what my life is going to look like in a few days' time, and that brings all of the nerves and excitement and the different feelings. I'm sure I'm not alone in that kind of feeling this year, whether it's relationship-related or family-related, whether it's happy change, wanted change, or devastating change expected and hoped for and long-awaited, perhaps, or sudden and shocking and unwanted. It may feel like a moment for you of so much change, or it might feel like a time of too much the same. Maybe a situation still unchanged, a prayer still unanswered, a grief that you still feel deeply, and yet somehow life just keeps going on. Life for you might feel like a whirlwind, might, right now, it might feel like a bit more of a monotonous drone or anything in between. But if I've learned anything from my time here at Rehope so far, it's um, I hear Brian's repeated message in my head of get the right things right in a time of change, in a time of crisis, in a time of a new beginning, get the right things right. And so we have a chance today on this New Year's Day to spiritually recalibrate, reset for a little second after what has no doubt been a busy season. And we get to look at Jesus we get to look at our lives and look at our lives through the hope that we have once again this morning. I was praying this Christmas week and asking God for a word for us today uh, because it's a strange moment for me. I'm here with you now, but then we're going to part ways for a little while and it'll be six months until I'm back with you all again at the end of uh, a sabbatical season. So I was like, I need you to speak, God. I need your word for us in this crossroads moment. And I got a song stuck in my head. And that frustrated me because I wanted a sublime word. I wanted a unique word. I wanted a tweetable word. And instead, I got this song stuck in my head. And it's this song that's on the screen. The lyrics are there. Refiner's Fire. Do you remember that song? And the simple words, especially this part that is on the screen, just over and over and over again in my head. And I knew it had to be God because this is not on any of my playlists. <laughs> I'm not listening to this song at Christmas time. This is not on my mind. But... I just couldn't shift this song from my mind. And so today's message is inspired by this song, and it's a bit of a pit stop message. We have some avid Formula One fans in this church. Daniel Adamti, I am looking at you. Well, this is a pit stop Sunday for us. So as we pause here for a second, my very simple encouragement to you is to resolve this year to enjoy the nearness of God and to choose holiness, to set our hearts on holiness these things will always go together. And we're going to center ourselves in Deuteronomy chapter 4, if you've got your Bible and you want to read it. Um, but the words will be on the screen. I think Deuteronomy chapter 4 was maybe one of my absolute favorite parts of Bible read through all of 2022. Um, and in it, Moses says this to God's people in a bit of a pit stop moment. He says, See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you're entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? Throughout Deuteronomy and beyond, all through the Bible, we see the nearness of God 
and this call to holiness loop and intertwine. God's nearness, his voice, his presence in us through the Holy Spirit in us leads us to live his way. And as we live storage, I just buy more storage. <laughs> now, it's not chronic yet, uh, but I do pay for 200 gigabytes of storage on the cloud. Speaking, speaking of the cloud, what is the cloud? Where is the cloud? Who knows? But it has all my stuff. And I pay the cloud this amount of money per month to have all of my things stored on there. And when I was notified recently that I'd once again run out of storage on the cloud, I looked at its little like analysis thing and I saw, okay, 99% of all my storage, it's just photos and videos. And that is because I have about 63,000 photos on my phone and over 2,000 videos on my phone. I'm a secret hoarder. Why? How? Because these photos and videos are a record of the last 10 years of my life. They are all I have of certain memories. They are my way of uh, looking at the past and making it visible and viewable and it's three-dimensional and there's color and there's sound and it makes it real to me. They've given something formless form and so I cling on to them for dear life. We have inherited humanity's age-old struggle, which is that no matter what we see God do, However, we experience his goodness, his help, his provision. In the waiting seasons, or in the disappointing seasons, even in the triumphs, in the breakthrough moments, we can reach for what we can hold and touch and smell and see with our eyes because maybe it's something that we can, maybe it's something we want, or maybe it's something that we can make ourselves, or maybe it's something that we can control. And so we reach for those things over him, ahead of him, or we elevate them above him. It is hard to hold fast to an invisible God. Moses continues speaking to God's people in Deuteronomy, and he says, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words but saw no form. There was only a voice. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or woman or animal or bird, etc., and when you look up into the sky and see the sun, moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them. But as for you, it says, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace, out of Egypt, to be, to be the people of his inheritance, as you now are. When the Israelites waited at the bottom of the mountain, they made themselves something that they could see and touch and hold, even though it was no God for them at all. In contrast, Hebrews 11 celebrates Moses' faith and says, By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Moses' faith fueled this perseverance that was stronger. His faith was stronger than fear. It wasn't blind faith, but it was faith because he somehow saw him who is invisible. But how? There's lots of things that are very real that we can't see and yet we see. For example, I have a very real heart connection to Northern Ireland, even though I've not lived there for 12 years. And I can't pick this heart connection that I feel up for you. I can't show it to you with your physical eyes. I can't lift it in front of you. But when I go home for Christmas, I know that it's real. I see the evidence of it everywhere. I see it in my unwavering love for Irish soda bread. I see it in how it feels to drive the first car I ever drove. I see it in the comfort of seeing my nanny wave me goodbye from her doorway. I have evidence of it. And so it is as real to me as any other real thing. Human nature means that we can feel the nearness of God one day, enjoy the nearness of God one day, and then have what we know to be true fade from our hearts as easily as it did for the Israelites. And they were told together, be careful. Don't forget what your eyes have seen. We might not see God, but we see 
him. We see evidence of him everywhere. And so we gather evidence and we share evidence and we need to record evidence because what we record, we will remember. And when we remember, we will celebrate his very real nearness together in this place. Back to Deuteronomy 4, verse 37 says this, because he, God, loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength. God rescues us by his nearness to be near to him. He rescued the Israelites from Egypt by his presence and his great strength. And Jesus rescued us. God with us, Emmanuel, rescued us by his presence and what looked like weakness but was great strength on the cross. And the Israelites are then told in verse 39, because of this, acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth below. There is no other Yes, children. (laughs) Holiness begins here in our hearts and then with our lives, us saying, God, you are God and there is no other. Now we know it is one thing to acknowledge something. It's quite another to take something to heart. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I have any memory of anyone ever telling me, take this to heart, take this to heart, anything. Um, I think we're much more trained to not take things to heart. Because if we tell someone not to take something to heart, what we're saying is, don't, like, brush it off. Don't let it sink deep. Don't change, don't be changed by it. Don't be affected by it. But in this instance, we need what we believe to sink deep. And we need to be affected by it. We need to be changed by it. We need to believe it so much that we are changed by it. Holiness is how God tests our hearts And holiness is love for God expressed. God, I love you more than I love that thing. Or God, I love you more than I'm going to cling to that habit. Or God, I love you more than I love my own plans in this moment. In Deuteronomy 13, um, it says, if a prophet comes along and says, let's follow other gods, don't follow them. Even if what they said comes true, don't follow them. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. So we should expect moments to come in life where we're lured or we might be tempted to go to the left or to the right. But in that time, it's the Lord your God you must follow, it says. Keep his commands and obey him, serve him and hold fast to him. So as we go into a new year, we might, it might be a time where we want to measure ourselves or we measure the year that's been or the year that's to come by all of these sorts of different metrics. Did I get fitter? Did I parent well? Am I happy? Am I on track? But God looks at the heart. Throughout history, God has tested his people to see if they really do love him with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their strength. And we repeat those words every time we gather on a Sunday that we said just today again. We repeat those words to remind ourselves that this is our life's goal, to get it into our bones. This is our overarching objective. And this New Year's Day, we'll all have different hopes and dreams for the year to come, different visions of what it looks like for us to thrive or just survive another year. But God looks at the heart. And I'm struck by the simplicity of God's concern for me in that way. Not so concerned with all the maybe this year's and the should haves or whatever, but do I love him enough to follow him only? Have we taken him to heart? To take something to heart means to deeply internalize it, to live by it. And when we take something to heart, it changes us. And so choosing holiness out of this nearness with God, choosing holiness this year doesn't mean I'm choosing to change my behavior as if it's from the outside in again, but choosing to let myself be changed inside out as I get towards the end. In Jeremiah 18, we read this beautiful depiction of God the potter and Israel the clay. And Jeremiah writes this, I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you Israel as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. I have believed God is creator for as long as I can remember. But when we did the creation series last year, what I took to heart in a new way was that God made me. God made me. And God is making me 
more like him. And I think over the years, maybe I'd come to view myself less like clay and more like a little potter. Like maybe me and God are near each other, close to each other, and we're both little potters and we're making our respective kingdoms. And maybe I want my kingdom to look like his kingdom and I want his involvement in my kingdom. But I think it just hit me afresh that when it comes to our relationship, at the end of the day, I am clay. He is the potter. And so choosing to be holy, choosing to yield to that process in my life is actually a relief because it means I don't have to be a potter in this context. I I get to be clay. God made me and is able to make me more like himself. So as I yield to that in my life, although God looks at me and sees Jesus' perfect holiness, I know that for me to be holy like Jesus is holy may take some molding, may even feel like fire. But if we allow him Just like the potter can take clay that is misshapen or marred or broken or stamped on and in his hands can remake it, add a little water, do what needs to be done to reshape it and remold it as it seems best to him. We can trust Jesus to reshape and remold and make us new as it seems best to him. At the start of a new year, I like to ask God for a word for the year. And my word for 2021 was wholeness which I have pondered over this year and asked God several times, many times, what do you mean by this word wholeness? There's been things that happen. I'm like, oh, maybe that's to do with the word wholeness. And I was thinking about it again the other day as Refining Fire, the song just like stirred through my mind and I was thinking about this message and I feel like God gave me a picture related to that word where I won't pretend to understand how silver is refined, although I have looked at it a little this week. I won't pretend to understand how it was refined back in the day. But the picture, I feel like God spoke to me through was um, a picture in my mind of him holding a piece of metal entirely in a fire, like the whole piece is in the fire, to refine it. That's what he's doing. And I felt like God spoke to me about how maybe before this year in life, I'd been accustomed to him maybe doing a refining work in certain parts of my life or parts of my mind or in a, with a particular habit or a particular thing or a particular thought cycle or whatever. But this year, there was something about letting him do it in every area all at once. (laughs) Would I let him put the whole piece in the fire for his refining work? My relationships, my time, my stuff, my home, my mind, everything. And in it all, my testimony is that I have come to know the God who cares for me in new ways, in deeper ways, because Jesus is a refining fire, but he's also our helper, healer, comforter, friend. Clay is molded in a potter's hand, and then it's fired in a kiln with precision, the right amount of heat for the right amount of time. And then it's used. It's filled up and poured out, filled up, poured out, beautiful, but made for a purpose. So I believe this year that when we enjoy the nearness of God, and embrace holiness, if we do, we'll be fit for purpose in new and wonderful ways. Challenge today, spend some time listening to God. And we're going to do it right now. Um, So we can start it here together just for a little moment. Um, If you want to close your eyes, you can close your eyes, if that helps. If you want to be ready to take a note on your notes app or whatever, you can. Or you can just um, contemplate these things in your mind. But Holy Spirit, would you come, God, here with us? Would you come and speak to us just by dropping thoughts into our mind? Lord, however you want to speak. We want to listen to you as we start this new year. God, we thank you that you're the God who's with us. And you do speak. So looking ahead, Lord, as you refine me, as you lead me to be holy? Is there anything you want to lead me away from? And if something comes to mind, you can just make a note of that, either in your mind or literally make a note of it. Is there anything you want to lead me away from? God, what are you leading me towards? this year or leading me into
what is on your heart for me this year? Is there maybe one word or a piece of scripture that can come to mind or a song? What is on your heart for me this year? If something comes to mind, receive it in faith. (laughs) Believe it. Make a note. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to go into our response time in a little second. God, thank you for today, and thank you that no matter our story, no matter how we feel heading into this new year, Jesus, you will go ahead of us, and you'll go with us. God, would you help us with the dot, dot, dots in our life, Lord, the things that we're still looking to you for. Would you remind us of your nearness and that you are still the God who hears. You're near to us when we pray to you. God, would you continue to speak to us and help us to start right, help us to start close to you, close to your heart. God, check our hearts today. And where you find anything that you would want to change, remove, help us with, bring into alignment with yourself. Would you do that work in us, Holy Spirit? Bring those things to mind. Bring them to light. Out of love and in love to make us more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's stand together.